That's what the thing is. I would invite you to talk amongst yourselves <laughs> for a few moments when I go white, when I leave the room to have a conversation with, with the Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, I put the title of the talk this afternoon is Communication in Business and in Politics. And I'm here to speak, I think, for about half an hour. And after half an hour, I'll try and answer any questions that you might have. But if, in the half hour, you think I'm saying something so untrue and so outrageous that you feel the need to interrupt, please don't. <laughs> I uh, want to start off uh, by saying a little more about why I can speak about politics and about business. I spent most of my life in the communications business. I spent 30 years working in advertising agencies or for advertising agencies or as a consultant to multinational clients. And so the whole of my formative experience in business has been uh, in communications. And as uh, you said a moment ago, uh, I was managing director of Saatchi and Saatchi, which at that point was the largest advertising agency uh, in the world outside Japan. Um, I then founded and ran my own advertising agency for 10 years, which I then served after 10 years to some rich American. Um, what I want to start off by saying is what I think business and political communications have in common. And I think they have many things in common, but there are three basic things that business and politics, when it comes to communications, do have in common. The first is a desire to register their message with somebody. The second is a desire to inform. And the third is a desire to persuade to persuade somebody of something. But politics and business have those objectives in common. But business is better at it, much better at it. Business got there first. Um, it got there first uh, because it needed discipline to do these things, and it needed discipline to do them via advertising. So the whole science, if it is a science, or the whole art, if it's an art, of communications in business and politics, was devised by the need uh, presented by modern communications methods uh, to actually have some discipline about what you say. Um, that means there was an absolutely overriding need to capture people's attention. It's no good delivering a message, no matter how compelling your message is, if nobody ever sees it. The first rule is people must be aware of your message. The second is uh, to do that you need two things. Uh, you need uh, simplicity. Business learned a long time ago that complex messages do not work. Complex messages do not work. I'll talk about politics and complex messages in a moment. Uh, to do that, you need something called creativity. And creativity, in my experience of 30 years of advertising creativity is what makes the difference between a good message well delivered, and something that doesn't work. You need always to engage people and to be persuasive. And to do that, you need two other things. You need to make sure that you're speaking their language. I don't mean that you're speaking English. I mean, if you're speaking the language people speak, the ordinary language that people speak. Business knows about that, and business often gets that right. Politicians get it wrong, very few. Politicians frequently don't speak the same language as the people they're talking to. Their language is stylized, their language is complicated, their language is conditional, and so it makes you suspicious. Uh, business doesn't, doesn't make that mistake. Now, this, there was a period in the 1970s and the 1980s which was the golden days of advertising campaigns. Some of the best advertising campaigns ever devised were done in the 70s and the 80s and the early 90s, and some of them by me. Um, the, the famous Coca-Cola campaigns, some of the campaigns for Nike, some of the campaigns for uh, Gillette, some of the campaigns for the Procter and Gamble brands, all of which I worked on, uh, were famous. Uh, and uh, they were famous because essentially they were simple, and they were entertaining. Why were they entertaining? They were entertaining for the reason I first go, 
They were entertaining because they needed to capture people's attention. Okay? It's no good being clever if nobody sees you being clever. It's no good being persuasive if nobody sees what your message is. And just as we thought in the 1990s that advertising was vulnerable and we were making a lot of money and we were having a good time, it all became very complicated. It all began to go wrong. Uh, and the reason it began to go wrong was the internet, digital media. Before digital media, life was easy. You only had two things to worry about. You had press, you print, and you had television. And actually, you prefer television because it was more fun and easier. But you had two things, only two media. After digital, the diversity of media platforms increased absolutely enormously. And it made another change with print and with television. The consumer is essentially, essentially passive. They sit there or read, and that's it. With digital media, they are interactive. And that meant you had to find a new way of generating interest in what we were going to say. You had to involve the consumer more than, than previously. It also had another effect, which is the inability any longer to market your message to very large audiences at the same time. When there was any television and press, you could put out one commercial on television, and you'd know that lots and lots and lots of people at home had seen that commercial. You can't do that anymore. There are too many television channels, there's too much digital activity, and now there are too many print media as well. And so the audience has been entirely fragmented. And that uh, has all kinds of results. But one big result, and one big and alarming result, is the loss of something very important in communication, which is the loss of the big idea. Because you have so many channels, and so many things to put your message on, the message sometimes gets diminished in impact and in size and importance. When you had only television, it was easy to have one very big idea and uh, repeat lots of it. Um, the uh, entertainment, which I talked about a moment ago, which is a role on television and in the press, um, and is beginning to become a role again in digital media, but it's much more difficult to get the kind of entertainment uh, and amusement in digital media than it was on television. People are beginning to learn, and YouTube uh, is a way of doing it. For YouTube, of course, you have to search for what you want. Uh, and also, um, YouTube is still not making any money for anybody, uh, which is uh, an enormous pleasure, of course, but that's not a problem. Uh, it sounds a bit pessimistic, but actually, I'm not pessimistic about business and communication at all. Now, I'm not pessimistic because, unlike politics, Business is simple. What they want is to make a profit. And if they don't make a profit, they go broke. And they will figure out how to make a profit. They will figure out how to deal with all this new digital media. They will figure out again how to get a single big creative idea uh, into, into your minds to persuade you uh, of something else. Now that's dealing with business. The politics is different. In the 1960s, uh, the, polit uh, the politics was way behind business in communication skills. The communication skills of the average politician, certainly in the United Kingdom and elsewhere, was the average communication skills of politicians in the 1960s was completely terrible. Completely terrible. Uh, and worse than that, they didn't generally feel much need to communicate with the people uh, in a proper way. What they said was old-fashioned, he used the wrong kind of language, there were too many words, too many complex words. It was paternalistic, um, and it was just plain boring. I mean, it was just impossible. Um, the other failure of, of um, politicians was what in the advertising industry is called an addiction, an addiction to long copy. In other words, there was too much of it. Uh, the messages weren't simple, and they were too long, and too complicated. When we first started to run party political broadcasts in the United Kingdom at general election times, these broadcasts were 15 minutes long. Can you imagine anybody watching a political broadcast that goes on for 15 minutes? Especially if it's just a